Wrestling is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup. Good morning, world famous Butch and Bob show. World famous Butch and Bob show for this Tuesday morning, St. Patrick's Day, the 17th day of March. We've got lots of guests on the world famous Butch and Bob show this morning. Keep people updated on all the news, news that's happening. And uh, world famous Butch and Bob show brought to you by Nips Car Wash and Murphy's Builder Supply. And Bob, let's go ahead and get started with our guest. We've got Senator Blake Tillery on the phone this morning. We have Tuesdays with Tillery. We have Tuesdays with Tillery. The session's been shut down. So I guess the first question is, Blake, do we have any idea when the legislature's going back to session? No clue, Bob. Um, as you know, you've already alluded to, Thursday we passed a joint resolution in the House and the Senate that gave the Lieutenant Governor and the Speaker the power to um, essentially postpone session, to set it aside for a second. They can also jointly reconvene us at any point in time. Where we are right now in the session, Thursday we made it through crossover day, um, and then we came in on Friday to really just gavel in clean up what had happened Thursday night and, and leave. So we're, we've made it through 29 days now, 11 remaining. If you have a full legislative session, the Constitution does not require us to have 40 days in session. It just says 40 days can be the maximum number of days. So we could adjourn literally tomorrow if we wanted to. We could adjourn with what we've already done. But for the fact that you've got one big looming issue out there, which is the state budget, Okay, we so. passed the amended budget. It ran through. It runs through June 30 of 2020. It does not fund the government from July 1st until June 30 of 2021. So that's the only remaining issue that has to be solved. It's the only thing that's keeping us from adjourning signing die right now. Okay, so we have no date on when you're going back. No date, but I can promise you that it'll have to be before June 30th. Okay, so. Also, the other news, Governor Brian Kemp ordered all the closure of all the public schools uh, starting tomorrow. So every school state in Georgia has to shut down beginning tomorrow. So Wayne County already made that decision yesterday, shut down beginning today. But the governor's recommendation is Wednesday to the end of the month, and then he'll reassess at the end of the month. Is that correct? That is. And then he did that based upon powers that were given to him yesterday. So this gets a little bit confusing, and I hope our your listeners can can hold with me through this while we're still in the current legislative session there is a provision of the georgia code that allows the governor to call in a special session and requires it be done in special session it can't be done in the current session for the purposes of declaring a public health state of emergency after he declares that the legislature has two days to come in and essentially ratify it if they don't then his emergency his state of emergency ceases to exist that's what we did yesterday. So we came into session yesterday morning. I, I know uh, you missed Mondays with Meeks because it's eight o'clock. Uh, at eight o'clock we convened yesterday morning. Why eight o'clock? Well, because when they wrote that statute, they said in two days the legislature shall convene at eight a.m. and and ratify or terminate the state of emergency. It also said that we had to convene in a special session. So that's one of the reasons why a special session was called yesterday rather than just having day 30 and, and of the current legislative session. So it's kind of funny as you look back now, I'm sure when they wrote that statute when they did, which wasn't that long ago, no one thought about the fact that you might be in session at the time and no one thought that setting it at 8 a.m. might be, uh, you know, they probably just wrote the time at the time and didn't think that you know, everyone would have to be there at that time during a current session for the call of a special session. But that's exactly what happened. That says the state lawmakers voted to ratify a public health emergency that grants the governor such sweeping new powers to suspend state laws and restrict travel. It doesn't say what the vote was. Was that a unanimous vote? I think it was unanimous in the Senate. I think it had one no vote in the House, um, but that's, that one no vote was sort of expected. Are you, are you feel good about that? vote? I mean, do you have any worries that the governor could have with all this power suspension? What's your thoughts on that? A lot of people are asking, think, you know, why would they give the governor that kind of power? Yeah, I think any time that you, uh, that the state or the government as a whole has, has more power than, 
and we're always naturally suspicious. Uh, but I do also think, one, I trust this governor, um, and that makes the decision a little bit easier. The second is um, we really are at, as we watch what's happening around the world, we're at a little bit of a, we're at a crisis situation. It's a point that you have to have, at some point in time, you have to have someone who's leading the charge, and there can't be 237 people leading the charge, that being 180 people in the House, um, 56 people in the Senate, and the governor. Uh, so we gave him the power to do what he needs to do for the purpose of trying to quarantine uh, uh, this flu epidemic. You're seeing, like I am and I know our listeners are, the folks, that what's happening in Europe, uh, what's already happened in China. Um, there's no way to stop the spread of stop COVID-19 from reaching the United States shores. That, you know, that cat's out of the bag, so to speak. Um, but there are ways that our epidemiologists and the public health folks have showed that we can try to, what they say, flatten the curve. In other words, not let that spike get so high. Um, what you will see, though, if you look at the at graphs, is when you flatten that curve, you actually draw out the virus. Plus, people get infected, but it, it draws out over a longer period of time. And some of those things that we're seeing now is that that could draw, draw into May and potentially the early parts of June. There's one thing that we do have in our favor, and it's that um, warmer weather seems to slow the spread of this virus, um, really kill it on, on surfaces. It's not in a host. I've heard this. Please don't take this as medical certainty. I'm not a doctor, although I did marry one. Um, the, the disease cannot, or the virus cannot live on surfaces that are more than 85 degrees. So if it's not in a host, a, a person, an animal, et cetera, something that it's that's hosting it, the virus, uh, 85 degrees on the surface seems to be its, it's uh, killing point. So that bodes well for us as the weather warms. Again, if you're joining us, this is Tuesdays with Tillery Blake. Tillery's on the phone. As you mentioned, you're close to the governor. I'm sure the governor's getting all kinds of advisements and updates from the medical professions. So, again, as you mentioned, the fear is this will last uh, several months. Is that what we're hearing I think I think we're probably going to be past the two week point, but I, I think the governor is being very prudent in trying to take smaller steps. You don't want to uh, make anything bigger than it ends up being. But I do expect at the end of that two week point, if our epidemiologists, if the public health folks are right, that we might be continuing that a little bit longer. Okay. Anything else we need to know? Like I say, that pretty much. Brings us up to date with where you are, because like I said, the session's closed down. Uh, the governor's got the authority to do what he feels is necessary. What about restricting, you know, I hear this word restrict travel. What What's the sentiment there? What what kind of travel is he going to restrict? Yeah, the, the governor has the power to do that on, on the, during a state of emergency. Um, I haven't heard that hint of him doing that yet. He obviously has that power to do so. You've seen governors in certain states close down different types of restaurants, bars, et cetera. One of the things that the governor said yesterday morning is that, you know, if we close those down, does he think that folks will, will congregate elsewhere? They probably would. Um, that yesterday morning, that didn't seem to be something that he wanted to do. But, I, but honestly, Bob, this thing's changing hourly. Um, so that could that happen? I, I I'm certain that it could. He obviously has that power. The one thing that I would want to remind folks is that, you know, during unprecedented times, you'll hear a lot of rumors. Um, my encouragement right now would just to be try to separate the facts from the fiction um, and pay attention to, to facts. So um, when, there's no reason to, to be hysterical if we know if we're paying attention to facts over fiction. Okay, Blake. Again, we appreciate you calling in. Again, uh, so are you back home now with the session closing? Yeah, I'm out? here. I'm actually sitting in my law office in Vidalia right now. Uh, uh, we're going to do a closing this morning. Or personally, we're going to do something a little bit different. The buyers and the closers will be in a separate room. I'll be obviously using Purell in between. Uh, but I encourage our listeners. We know the two best things that we can do is avoid crowd, crowds and, and try to wash your hands, which sounds like such a simple thing. Um, but particularly if you're over 60, trying to avoid um, uh, groups of more than the CDC said 50, and now we heard the president last night say more than 10. Okay, Blake. Yeah, appreciate you being here. Well, I guess we'll talk to you next Tuesday. Yes, sir. Talk to you soon. Thanks. All right, okay. Thanks for calling in, Blake. Big Dog Cancer Radio, WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup. And Senator Blake Tiller here on Tuesdays with Tillery.
We've got lots of guests on the World Famous Butch and Bob show this morning. Uh, we've got uh, some folks out there in the green room that's going to talk about the census. wonder if they're going to still do that with all this going on. We've got Dr. Jay Brinson in here right now to talk about the schools. And so, Bob, we've got uh, uh, Jay Brinson in the studio with us right now to talk about what's going on with the Wayne County Schools. Let's get started. Hey, well, the board met yesterday. As we mentioned, they had decided to close schools until the end of spring break, which the spring break week is April 6th to the 10th. So, as I understand it, Jay, from the board meeting yesterday, nothing's going to take place at the schools between now and then. Is that correct? That, that's correct. Everything's shut down. You know, we, we we'll have some, uh, you know, some essential folks to kind of keep the system running, still paying the bills, and of course, you know, um, our awesome nutrition staff jumped in action really last week planning, and we're going to begin serving meals today actually and we're going to do that two days a week they're going to serve multiple meals at, at one time a lot of it will be non-perishable um, information there from Rindy. non-perishable items that they can carry with them um and like you said earlier it is going to be a drive through pickup type service you know folks just stay right there in your car or walk up and you'll you'll be given more or less a bag, big bag of, of goodies that will get you through for the next couple of days. Uh, and we vote, we're opening a, a lot of sites, but I will mention now if these sites are, are not viable and we don't have a lot of folks, there is a, a chance we may shut them down and move you know, some of our personnel. We're trying to c keep the personnel down to a minimum, of course. Uh, just we'll keep them safe. But like you said, the locations are Wayne County High School, Arthur Puckett Middle School, Arthur Williams Middle School, James E. Bacon Elementary, Odom Elementary, Sk Scriven Elementary, with Ralph Smith Elementary, Jessup Elementary. So that is all eight schools plus Turning Point Worship Center, Wayne County Board of Education on seven, at 710 Pine Street, the Boys and Girls Club, and World Class Karate. And we appreciate all of our community partners willing to, you know, they're, they're calling, wanting to help in any way possible. And that's what it takes in a time like this. Like it's, it's unprecedented, unchartered water. So we've got to make sure we get those meals out. So we'll continue that for the foreseeable future, uh, again, on, on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays only. And the big question that was asked yesterday, will teachers still get paid? Yes, <laughs> and, I mean, and if, the answer it, is yes, right? Yes. You know, <laughs> we're, yeah. we're, every, we're not, you know, we're trying to protect our employees. Uh, and then they're still going to be doing some work. Like I said, our, our teachers, we've asked them to begin planning uh, a, a distance learning uh, opportunities for students, you know. Uh, I guess we're all going to be homeschooled here for for a little bit, it appears. So we're getting that ready. And there's a lot of different virtual platforms that we can use and communicate with students. And so teachers will be working on that. Um, you know, we thought we were going to have this week to kind of plan that, so we didn't. So we're kind of in the planning stages, and we'll, we'll enact that um, basically after spring break. question I was thinking about, you know, when you miss days due to weather, like snow days or, you know, hurricane, things like that, you have to make these days up. So I see where a lot of states are waiving that. Uh, I haven't seen the state of Georgia waive that yet. So what is the game plan? I mean, isn't it a law that kids have to go a certain amount of days? Actually, no. You know, back, if you remember back, uh, the, the state of Georgia has waived that. They waived that back when uh, schools had the opportunity to either be charter systems, charter schools, or strategic waiver systems, uh, which is what we are, strategic, strategic waiver school systems. So that was included in our, in our waivers. But in, in a time like this, you know, extending the school year is certainly a possibility and, and would certainly be appropriate, but there's a lot of the logistics that go into that as well. So that's certainly an option. I'm not, we've not uh, taken that off the table. Um, so that, that's certainly a possibility, and that's one reason why I'm not concerned about instruction starting today, you know, with, with, with children. We, we want to make it meaningful. You know, we don't want to just send home crossword puzzles and, you know, Coloring books and that sort of thing. We want to make it. <laughs> we want to make it fun to me. There, <laughs> yeah. I understand, I understand, but you know these. Uh, but we just have so many other tools nowadays that we can, that we can use. Um, so we appreciate you helping us get the word out. And the one thing you know that stuck with me is the fear that this could drag on for several yeah. months. So the question that I kept thinking about could graduation possibly be canceled. Yeah, you know, that's, you know, and I know everybody's concerned about it. I'm concerned about it, too. Certainly the, the, the students and, and parents, I, I get it. Um, we will do everything that we can to have that. But we're going to take the governor's lead. We're going to keep folks safe, um, you know, and, 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 like, when things are mandated, we're going to follow the, the mandates right, and, and directions. I mean, that's, so that, that, but that's concerning. That the, I understand. That, that's what I keep seeing, you know, this thing's going to drag on. You know, they're saying until maybe June or July, so that's what scares me is that the fact that, you know, right now I feel the crunch, but the potential of things down the road being 
Yeah, and that's yeah, the uncertainty is, is the scariest thing, and, and the public health officials are, are still indicate that we've not reached that peak yet, and so that's the concern. What does that look like, and when does that come, and that, you know. Um, so, anyway. Uh, we'll so, I guess we've got to take it day things. by day, week by week. So, the main thing is Pretty what much. people need to know is from right now, schools are closed until and after spring break. That's correct. And your plan is when you come back after spring break is to have online classes. Yes, if we're not back in school. Uh, we can't have regular school. We're going we're gonna to have that plan and that for as where, where teachers, you know, can communicate. Um, and then they're still free to come into schools. A lot of folks, you know, like to work from schools, uh, and they can. We just, we're just not going to have students until that's, that's cleared. Um, so they'll just need to, again, follow our website, all of our social media platforms for communication purposes, and, and uh, that's where that information will come, how, what the plan is and how we're going to um, have students access materials and that sort of thing. And we're not, you know, we understand there's accessibility and coverage and internet co uh, connectivity issues and that sort of thing. And that we're not, hadn't ruled out, there might be some paper and pencil things that we uh, get the students to deliver them. You might run the bus routes or, or something like that to get information out for parents and students. You know, what's interesting, you know, before this virus came to the forefront, the governor was warning that there could be an economic downturn. Whew. He was asking all departments to cut budget, things like that. And here you see this come and you see the economic impact it's going to have. And you mentioned it yesterday. So yeah. the state's funding is going to be limited. So I guess projects like renovation, James E. Bacon, new track, all that's put on hold at the time being, right? Well, it's definitely concerning. Um, we, we're still moving forward because we haven't, you know, we hadn't really uh, press the button to move forward yet. We're still in the planning and designing for James E. Bacon, the track. We're still hunting a permit and those types of things. But that's something to be considered. I, I'm very concerned. I'm very concerned economically the impact it's going to have on the state. Um, and education is a, it's a big part of it, but in the grand scheme, it's, it's a small part of it when you start thinking about shutting down travel, people losing jobs. Um, you know, that, that it's uh, just sure getting getting things in grocery stores is a challenge at this point. So it's, it's very concerning. We'll just have to wait and see and follow the state and federal lead. Uh, just something to be aware of. I said, it's just, let's imagine this is like a day by day, week by week situation. But the main reason I want you here is just to stress again, you know, everything shut down until after spring break. Everybody will reassess after that, make another That's announcement at that time where we're, where we're at That's that correct. point. And also to stress the fact that, you know, a lot of parents were worried about where these kids are going to get these meals from. And it's a Tuesday, Thursday set up the time, 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. Again, as you mentioned, it's kind of a drive through thing. It's available for children 0 to 18 years of age, people with special needs. It's free of charge. Meals you know, for multiple days. Again, as you mentioned, they'll have a big bag, so this will hopefully carry them through the days, not just right. one day. That's right. correct. Yeah, right. They're going to get like multiple meals at that, right. you know, each time. Each time. And uh, you're correct. No, the only other thing I would say is, you know, I think I feel like, uh, especially when Memorial Hospital, they've done a great job kind of encapsulating what you should do. You know, the social, I've learned some new words, social distancing, you know, uh, presumptive positive, some of those things, but follow their lead and in, in what they're they're recommending for is you know, avoid uh, large groups. Wash your hands. Use common sense. If you don't feel good, stay home. Stay out of the out of the, out of the fray. And, and um, I, I think it's you know we, we can debate the political thing, but it, it, the facts are it is um, dangerous for you know older adults. And, and folks would have you know, compromised immune systems, and that's something that really drove it home for, for me, is that we have folks in our school system, even younger adults, but, you know, that have, uh, they're medically fragile, or they have immune system issues, or they may even take, uh, they may be healthy, but they take medications that, you know, reduces the, the strength of their immune system, so that puts them at higher risk. And so that's, that's what it's all about, um, just using common sense and following the guidelines. Okay. Well, again, we okay. appreciate you coming in. Again, Thank you. Appreciate you just letting know about the board meeting yesterday. Like I said that's the information we need to let everybody know. The school system is shut down until after spring break, and they'll reassess at that point and go from there. And that's right. And please don't hesitate to call us with questions. And, you know, we, we have more questions than answers at this, at this time, but we do have some information. Follow our website. Call the board office, 427-1000, or call myself, 294-4571, and we'll try to get the answers for you because, again, we don't want to panic. We want people to have good information. And, and please, as far as the school system, please get good information from from myself or Dr. Burgess, who kind of uh, runs our communication part, because we want folks to, you know, 
act appropriately, and you can do that when you have better information. And the board has a website. I'm sure they'll update the information on the website. On our website, it is. Like that. I said, that's the thing. You know, I keep seeing these reports where all these people are panicking with yeah. false information. Yeah, that's so right. We want to make sure people know where to get the correct that's information. Important. And so the website and the school system will have the correct information. Yes, yeah, the other that's the system. hub of everything for us, and that's even connected to some of our social media, but it's www.wayne.k12.ga.us. Okay, Jay. Okay. Appreciate you coming in. Thank right. you so much. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Appreciate you keeping us updated there on the Wayne County School System. Dr. Jay Brinson, our guest. All right. The time now is 820. Coming up next here on the World Famous Butch and Bob Show. Well, the, it's 2020. It's time for a census. We've got the person who knows all about it here in Wayne County. going to be on the show in just a moment. Here's your WIFO forecast. Good morning. Areas of fog reducing visibility. Slight chance of showers early. Then a 30% chance of afternoon showers. Slight chance of thunderstorms. Highs up for 70s. Mostly cloudy. Fog late. Low 60s for tonight. Areas of fog first thing tomorrow. Then partly sunny. 30% chance of showers. Highs low 80s. Thursday, mostly sunny. Highs in the mid 80s. Georgia meteorologist John Weatherby in the GNN Weather Center. Hi. My name is Emily and I'm 8 years old. I spend each day wondering if I have food in my tummy or if my parents leave and come home. A lot of times when they do, they are so drunk they don't even notice that I'm there. My stepdad gets really angry and takes it out on my mom. My sister and I hide in our closet until it's over. Sometimes he hits us really hard. He says what happens at home stays at home. So we aren't allowed to tell. Besides, who would listen anyway? Nobody longs for a loving family more than a child. By becoming a part of Tri-County CASA, you can help hundreds of children who live right here in your community. Tri-County CASA is currently looking for volunteers who have a heart for helping abused and neglected children. If you'd like to help make a difference, become a volunteer. Contact Pam Holmes at Tri-County CASA at 912-367-0064. All right, 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO. World famous Butch and Bob show for the St. Patrick's Day. It's kind of hard to feel that way with no parades going on and all that kind of stuff. But we do have someone in here wearing green right now. Uh, we'll continue on with the world famous Butch and Bob show. It is 2020, so every 10 years, dictated by the U.S. Constitution, we've got to have a census here in the United States. And so uh, we've had someone who stood up and volunteered to be the head of the census of uh, here in Wayne County for the uh, Wayne County government. We have Sharon Corson here this morning. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing good. Yeah, you got your green on this got morning. Got my green on. Good. All right. So Sharon Corson, of course, uh, she uh, works with the Emergency Management Agency here in Wayne County, and uh, she got selected to head up the uh, the census drive here in Wayne County from a local level. So, Sharon, tell us what's going on. All right. Well, um, everybody should have gotten some mailers this week. They started sending them. You did? Good. Yeah, I did. All right. Um, there has been some chatter I've noticed on Facebook that, you know, people are saying, is this real? Is this spam? Is this? It is real. Um, this was the first mail out of the census for this year. Um Go ahead and our, we're encouraging people. Go ahead and fill it out. You can do it online. It's very. It's a lot easier than before. It's not this long form like it used to be. Um, they really are encouraging the online. But you can do it online. Service. Yes, I've got, I you can do it on your smartphone. Yeah, I had to open my envelope yet. It's thick. Do I, you fill out so forms you're, there? Or you what? can. That there's a paper form there, but there's also a pen on there that um, kind of links to each address. Oh, okay. So if you go ahead and open it up, get that pen. You can go on your phone even and. It's got instructions in that packet. You can go to census.gov, and then it gives you a link so you can fill it out. You can put in that little pin, and the pin number is basically to assure that the person gets associated with the address. Right. So that's what the pin number is all about. Right. Um, there's just that's going to be the first mail out. And of course, it wasn't addressed um, to me. It was just addressed to resident. Right. So they, you know, you're sending it to whoever lives in that home. And that's or that's people who live in that home. So really, what the census. One. Exactly. Yeah. That's what it's all about is counting how many people live in the residences in Jessup mm -hmm. in Wayne County. Um, because there are so many different things that get 
accounted for by the census number. We get funding for the state. The state delegates six hundred seventy-five million billion dollars. Let me get, get that right. Um, and I mean that gets distributed. Six hundred seventy-five million dollars gets distributed by um, population. So we really want our count to be accurate. Yeah, you want to be counted. So make sure you fill out that census form, everybody in the household. And some people, there's a stigma out there that some people feel like that this information is going to be used against me for whatever reason. That is one of the biggest things that, that people need to understand. The information that the census gets from you is private for 72 years. It is held by the census for 72 years. It is, it is not released to anybody. It's not released to any police departments, any anything like that. So this information is is purely just to get a count, an right. accurate it's count a, it's of a, the community. It's one of the items in the U.S. Constitution is you've got to take a census in the United States every 10 years. Exactly. And uh, so that's, that's a civic duty that we should all do and we've all done every year for the past however long we've been alive exactly um there will be another reminder letter going out uh, between the 16th and the 24th of march and then there's going to be a postcard the 26th through the 5th and then a reminder letter and a paper questionnaire between april 8th and 16th and then the 20th through the 27th there'll be a final reminder postcard so the date that you count is april 1st that is census day mm -hmm. um and that just simply means whoever is in the house on April 1st. It's not, you don't have to do it exactly on April 1st. You can do it now and account for who is living in your house and who's going to be there April 1st. Right. You can do it all the way up through May. Now, in May is when if you have, if they've sent all these things and you haven't responded at all, that's when people will start um Knocking on your door. Knocking on the doors. That's when you have your census workers go out in May for people who have not filled exactly. out the census form. And that is the plan. I Have I gotten any official word from the Census Bureau because of the coronavirus? No. Okay. I don't know the if that's going right to change, but okay. as of now, that's the plan. But really, it's, it's the most simple if you just go online and fill it out. Okay. However, if you don't want to go online and fill it out, this is Debbie Turner. She's here from... The library system and she's going to tell you how their system is set up for people that want to that need a computer to use that can go in and and set it and uh, use the system they have set up in the library all right good morning good morning welcome to the uh, butch and bob show so tell us how people can uh, y'all can assist people with the census well the uh, library got a grant so we got uh, four additional computers that are designated strictly for the census it allows them to sit down move the mouse and you're right there on the census page it takes takes less than five minutes if you're computer savvy to get the census done. Um, we are there to help them if they have any uh, problems understanding questions. Uh, we are unable to fill it out for them. So if there is an issue, uh, whether someone is uh, has a sight issue or a learning disability, it is important that they bring someone they trust that can help them with that because we are not allowed to do that. Okay. Unfortunately, right now, uh, as of uh, 5 o'clock yesterday, the library is closed. Um, we are trying to meet the needs of our uh, patrons so that we can get them books for our homeschoolers and such. So we are having a pickup service between um, the hours of 12 and 1 and 5 and 6 to pick up hold materials. But the census is kind of on hold for us because keeping the uh, inside of the library right now, we're we're working, we're cleaning everything, making sure everything is sanitized before mm -hmm. we open up again. Okay. All right. So um, you will be able to assist in the future, but right now you're not going to be able to at the library. But in the future, when the library reopens, then folks can go there if, uh, if they need a computer to fill out their census form. Correct. But you don't have to have a computer right here. And you right. can do it the old-fashioned way by paper, right? You it's can right do it there. by it's paper. Right there in the, it's right there in your, uh, in your big envelope that I got. Right. And everybody you can do else it by got. paper. And also, there is a call-in number this year that you can call into. So that okay. number is 1-800-923-8282. Okay. okay. 1-800. What now? 923-8282. Mm -hmm. And what would people call that for? You can actually call into the Census Bureau, and they will ask you the questions. You can, act, if you have oh, that you code, can, yeah, you can call you can in call and do it by phone. Is, so, if there's somebody that's 
you know, some people don't like computers, don't aren't computer savvy, don't want to touch a computer or a phone or a smartphone. So you can call in and you can just do it by question. Okay, somebody so, wanted to know what the uh, website of the uh, fill out the census. That will be in your uh, uh, envelope when you get it. So when you get that envelope, which everybody should get in the mail, delivered to to your home or apartment or wherever, inside that envelope is the web address and it's got your PIN number. It doesn't do any good to fill out that website unless you have that PIN number that's personal inside your envelope. You won't be, you know, it and doesn't matter. And you, but you can go to 2020census.gov. Yeah, you can go there, but you got to have that PIN number well, that's in your envelope, right? it is right? suggested to have the PIN number. I think there is an option that you can do but it without what keeps people from doing all, to. I mean, I could sit there and say, I have, uh, you know, uh, eight people living in my home. How do you, how do, how do you keep fraud from, from doing this? There's no... There's no way of saying, okay, I could sit there and say I live there alone or I live there with eight other people and just well, make up fictitious names and histories and all that kind of stuff. How, do you, how, do, how, is, how, do, how is that uh, done to keep it accurate? Well, I know that one of the representatives told us in the last meeting we had that um, after everything is done, mm -hmm. they spend probably the next five to six months going through names. They try to make sure there's no duplications of names. Um, but I'm talking about false names. You know, people just, I mean... It, it, well, I would. I, I'm just wondering how they they check the accuracy of it. Is, is my concern. Well, I would think by social security numbers. Social I security think numbers. You, you know, okay, you so you take a, they numbers. take a look at the names and the address, and they t match it up with social security numbers. That would that and would make sense. Right, and so it's just you know eliminating if that number's popping up on two different addresses. Right, then right. You, it's going to go on one or the other. Well, so. with, with the information that they all put on computers, I guarantee you, if the, there would be red flags everywhere with social securities or duplication of. Uh, and, you know, there's tons of, of the same names out there, uh, but uh, right. uh, I'm sure they've got ways of doing that to make sure that the names are accurate. Right. But it's only the Census Bureau that will be checking this information. Yeah, the only the so, Census Bureau. Um, that's one thing that I just, I can't it reiterate enough is that it and is And it's probably a federal crime to falsely fill out a census form, I imagine. I would think. But I'm not maybe, sure. But I don't know. I don't know either. I'm not going there. I'm not, I'm not going, going there either. <laughs> but I'm just saying the fact that, you know, it's a shame that you have to think that way. But uh, so many people try to pull things over on people that you, you've got to be careful on that. But the main thing is, is everybody, and I know I did, receive my census uh, packet. It's a big envelope, thick. I haven't opened it up yet. It's got the census forms inside of it that can be filled out. Or you can go online or you can call a number, a 1-800 number, and the census person there will ask you the questions you'll just have to have the pin number from your envelope actually um it's not going to go f by social security numbers no, it's not um no it is going to go by addresses so addresses only okay i think they're hoping um, the best case scenario is where the person in the household that's filling it out is honest you know to the best of their ability to let them know okay. how many the idea the is system. yeah they want everybody to be counted in there mm-hmm Instead of saying I'm living in a, a house with, you know, two bedrooms and I've got eight people living in mm -hmm. there, you know, they want that to be what they put on there, not make it look like it's right. supposed to. Right. You and know. a lot of the, a lot of children get left off, so children need to be counted also. Yeah, and here's a scenario younger. that they gave us. Oh yeah. If someone, remember the woman was, if someone's pregnant and the baby is born April first. It counts. <laughs> if the baby is not born by April 1st, you can't count that baby in this uh, census. So, okay, so April 2nd, don't count it. But any time before April 1st, that baby counts. So so it's kind of like taxes, you know, or, or marriage. You know, whatever you are on December 31st is what you were for that year. So, you know. April if, 1st is April the April 1st, you know, you, can, uh, you, don't, you don't count it. Or That's you do right. count it. Which one is it? Do you do or you don't? Up to, up through April 1st, you count it. Okay. If the baby's born after April 1st, you don't. Oh, okay. Because April 1st is that's census the date. day. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the cutoff day there, just like December 31st is on taxes or right. marriages or divorces. Exactly. Right. You yes. fill out your taxes later, but right. that's the date that that's everything date, counts April by. April 1st. So. Exactly. Whatever is... Whatever is on April first. So if the if the if the bun is in the oven, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and it's born on April second, that baby don't count in the census. But if it's born on March thirty first or April first, it or April, March thirty first, it does. Okay. And really, I mean, the census is my, you know, everybody that lives in this community uses the roads, uses 
fire department uses you know the police department all of the all of the utilities here everything that this community has mm -hmm. to offer we get more funding based on the right. amount of population we have yeah it's important for the um, census to be as accurate as possible and that's the reason why our, uh, our founding fathers put that in the constitution is that a, a federal census has got to be done every single 10 years and it's done on the federal level it's done on the state level and so we should all do our civic duty and fill out the civic forms uh, fill out the um, uh, the census forms uh, either by paper or either by internet or you call that 1-800 number and they'll help you uh, th they'll take the questions but you've got to have that pin number from your envelope to be able to do it also legislative districts are determined by the number of people it does. in the community yeah, so, the more people I mean, we have in georgia the the more um uh, the more a house of representatives will have more members will have in the house of representatives some exactly. states will lose uh house members and some will gain right very so important to fill it out it is it is it's very important we so need the 2020 be. census begins and a lot of folks most of y'all should already received your envelopes and um, you can fill it out now, but census day starts April 1st, and, and just you'll get all kinds of reminders. And by the end of May, somewhere along in there, if you hadn't filled it out, and census workers will be coming knocking on your door, um, help um, Corona's fires permitting. <laughs> yeah. I think the funniest question I got asked was, um, what is the number we have to get to to be able to get a Chick-fil-A? <laughs> I don't know what that number is, but yeah, <laughs> there's, a, there's a certain number that uh, you can't get certain restaurants in a community until you get to that number. So that's that's one of the questions I got asked. What is that number oh, that we geez. need to get to in our population to get a Chick-fil-A I got 35 here? people in my house. <laughs> we got to get to the Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Uh, Sharon Corset in here with the uh, Wayne, uh, with Wayne, uh, well, she's with the EMA of Wayne County, but uh, she's been selected to head up the uh, census uh, here in Wayne County. And you'll be back again on April 1st. Is that right? What date do we have you set up for? Or either the 31st. I think 31st. It's one of those two 31st. days we have yeah. you coming in right before census day to once again remind folks, you've got your census. Don't throw it in file 13. Keep it out there. Go ahead and get it over with. And get, just go ahead and do it and get it over Everybody's with. Everybody's got time now. Yeah, you They're got home. time now. You got time now to fill out yeah. the form or go on the internet and fill it out or call that 1-800 number and uh, they'll help you. Uh, they'll take the information from you. Exactly. Um... I did want to mention that we uh, met with uh, Wayne Memorial yesterday. Okay, so we're through talking about the census yeah. right now. We're moving on to another subject with Sharon Corson. Go ahead, Sharon. I just want to throw this out there. Yeah. Um, and some of the things that they wanted to convey was really one of the most important things you can do right now is wash your hands. Constantly mm -hmm. wash your hands and keep them clean. Um, and they're urging people to call their their um, physician's office before coming in. Um you know, if it's a well visit, if you, you may want to reschedule it, or if you think that you may have, you know, if you're running fever and you're showing signs, just call the office and, you know, have a talk with them before you actually show up there. Okay. Um, and, I mean, we talked about if if you are in that, you know, higher range in the elderly category that's more susceptible to this virus, you know, if you can have somebody go to the grocery store for you or, you know, do your shopping do things that need to be done if they can go out for you and keep the biggest thing is stay home as much as you can stay away from people you know remember the six foot rule that's a good rule to have um just try to healthy hygiene is so important right now yeah and just staying out of large groups well it ought to cut down on the regular flu you know we already have about thirty six thousand deaths in america every year from exactly. just regular flu strains and uh, so um, uh, luckily we hadn't gotten to that point yet with the coronavirus, and hopefully it won't get there, but if we all just be diligent and do that. But, they are. but I do encourage people to, um, to Google 2009 pandemic. 2009 pandemic, we had a major one back then that killed up to a half million people worldwide and millions of people here in America. Uh, hundreds of th uh, up to 500,000 killed up to 500,000 with millions infected the 2009 pandemics as uh, one is known as a swine flu we actually have somebody here with the, work, the radio station who got the swine flu back uh, back then or you can uh, google h1n1 pandemic and up to half a million people got um, uh, there was a millions infected up to half a million people worldwide died uh, from that h1n1 uh, from the um from april 2009 to april 2010 
Wow. Uh, we didn't have the panic we do now, even though there was, uh, you know, millions and millions of people infected and, uh, you know, uh, up to half million people died from it. So you can see how this pandemic is mirroring the one back then because um, it started in April. The president th at that time, Obama, really didn't get serious about it until November. That's when he declared a national uh, medical emergency. There was not enough test kits. There was no vaccine. Uh, we were in short supply of all kinds of medical supplies. And so it took quite a while to get this uh, in line. Uh, but uh, it, it affected um, a lot of people, not in the United States, but around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, but this time, a lot more precautions being taken. I did post a link on the uh, Wayne County Public Safety page that you can look at. It's um it's a DPH Department of Public Health page, and it will show you the daily status report yeah. of cases in Georgia. So right. for people that are just kind of wanting information, wanting to see mm -hmm. where we're at, it shows you by county where cases are. Okay. So it's kind of interesting, but um it's on the Wayne County Public Safety page. All righty. Well, Sharon, good luck with the um, with Thank the census, you. and uh, hopefully you don't get the library open before long. Go ahead, Sharon. We do have a census page. It's just uh, Wayne Census. Wayne Census. Mm -hmm. Wayne it's census a Facebook what? page. Oh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Wayne Census. So you there's information also there and links that you can use. All right. Fill out those census forms and get counted. All right, Sharon. Thank have you. A have day. a great day. Be safe. All right. 105.5 FM and Jess at Big Dog Country Radio, WYFO, the world-famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by Nips Car Wash, located on Highway 301 South, just past McDonald's on the left-hand side, and also brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply, where the builders buy, located on Northeast Broad Street in downtown Jess. The world-famous Butch and Bob Show.